Hello and greetings from Iceland. In this update I will be focusing at uh, geology, people and the future. And uh, since it's a lot of uh, disaster footage out there, I decided to use some of my Grindavik footage of choice. From the Grindavik, I want to see again, in some form, some day. But let's uh, start with the scientists, and this is not an easy task for them. They keep on drawing up likely scenarios, and actually too many of them. The media has this tendency to keep on asking, and uh, many don't get all the answers they want. They just come up with more and more experts and more possible scenarios, not always making things simpler. But when we look at the obvious facts alone, like seismic unrest, things are cooling down, but we are stuck with this dike under the town, and a part of it has dropped 25 centimeters in addition to the meter it dropped last weekend. And the experts say it's also widening due to some magma inflow, and while that is the case, we should expect an eruption. One of the interviews I found yesterday was with Professor Thorvaldur Thorðarsson, and uh, finally we got some remarks about the tectonics there. But one of my questions is, uh, did plate movements trigger the dike intrusion, or was it the other way around? But I can't say that the answer helped me this time, since the professor was saying uh, it's still difficult to understand the data, or whether the chicken or the egg came first. So I decided to start this Friday fresh, do the bacon before the eggs on my dish, and left the chicken for lunch, because uh, I needed the energy. The hardest part of this video was to make a solid text that sums up the situation from all the different uh, scientific views out there. And uh, those of you who have been here on the channel with me for a while, you know that I have full faith in Icelandic scientists. But in this case, they seem not to agree on the amount of inflow of magma into this dike, or how to interpret the such models. And this morning, yet another volcanologist came forward, this time asking us to expect a submarine eruption rather than an eruption around there in the middle of the dike. And he was saying that uh, it's simply not enough pressure under there to get the magma up from the dike. And uh, that sounds logical to me. But still, this is just one more version, and while this lazy magma is just splashing around there, the town remains closed, and it's not even proper access for the media, and it's a growing dissatisfaction with the salvage operation. So, despite this new remark about the submarine eruption, the attention is being focused at the northeast side of the dike, and it seems to me as the town might get some good luck after all. And if it's going to erupt, it's going to be further north. And gas has actually been detected in one of the geothermal boreholes there, near the Blue Lagoon and the power plant, indicating magma at a little depth. And uh, work has already started on lava barriers to protect the power plant. And will such barriers work? That's a good question. We tried that idea during the 2021 eruption. Some of the barriers worked out, some not. So it's only one way to see if this attempt is going to do something. Barriers do only hold so much, but they can direct the lava to other places where it can accumulate for a while and uh, buy us some time. And uh, this is an attempt that just has to be done because it's so much at stake there. If the power plant goes out, it will affect 30,000 people all over the peninsula. So the trucks and the bulldozers, they are there day and night now. And if this dike would erupt, a little further north than we expect now, everything would be way easier than it looks today. But to be realistic, I don't think it's time to think about uh, the town or its future right now. In best case scenario, the ground needs some time to uh, settle there. But as for the mentality in Grindavik and the people there, I know many of them would like to move back if the town won't be ruined from the lava. But it is very clear that the electricity and the plumbing system is... Uh, damaged and it would take months to fix it and uh, it will not be done this winter. So how does things look as for insurance? We do have this emergency fund that was established after the disaster in the Westman Islands in 1973 and it has enough uh, money to cover the town and the state has offered a paycheck guarantee so everyone will get their salaries for at least the next three months. But the biggest problem is, of course, the housing problem. 
and of course the schools for the kids. So the neighboring municipality Reykjanesbær, better known as Keflavík, has been helping out like Reykjavík and other villages and towns around. But there is no quick fix uh, solution to this, of course. And as for homes, there are holiday apartments around the country owned by unions, and uh, many of them have been used to house the people from Grindavík. Others uh, have moved in with relatives and such. So what we have is a community scattered around the country, facing the question, will there be a town after this? And I think that while there is a harbor there, there will be some fish industry, but it would not be as large community as it used to be, and it would be more about tourism than it is today. And the most important task now, in my opinion, is to import several hundred houses to be assembled in different villages by the coast. In some cases, tiny houses that could be moved and uh, traded into the general market when things settle down. But as for the future, Grindavik will be the subject of a new risk assessment, of course. This is perhaps the hardest town in Iceland, if not impossible, to redesign when it comes to safe building land. And this uh, has made us think back to the avalanche disasters that we had to deal with here in Iceland and all the infrastructure that we invested in to protect even the tiniest villages. So will there be a town there in the future, or a town that will be protected by barriers, I can't say. Or perhaps even an unprotected town that is only used during the fishing seasons, or used as a tourist resort, or something of that kind. But one of the quick solutions for us could be to move some of the fishing boats from Grindavík to the nearby towns, towns like Thorlaugsöfn, which uh, is a village with somewhat similar structure as our economy as Grindavík. It's a town with plenty of building land, and it's little over 30 minutes away from the city, like Grindavík, but they do as well have their own set of volcanoes nearby, volcanoes that are a part of the system from the Reykjanes Peninsula, and when one of those systems wake up, they all do according to history, so it is very clear that we need to do a risk assessment for the complete peninsula. And we need to include Reykjavík, because uh, not even our capital was designed around the fact that the Reykjavík Peninsula is waking up. And not even the most recent building projects are built on safe ground. And that is an issue that I've been covering on the channel every now and then since 2021, since the first eruption, because I felt as we were not doing enough. So now is the time for some of our politicians to wake up to a new reality. And even though our scientists can't uh, interpret everything exactly now or where this is taking us, they did get it right when they predicted this chapter to start. And I remember them saying this for like 20 30 years, or that the Reykjanes Peninsula would wake up and that chapter would be uncomfortable and take a long time. And here we are in the middle of the most expensive natural disaster since 1973, and this has just only started. And uh, what worries me the most is that uh, things could get way worse than this. So uh, I will cover that in some of my upcoming work. I have been filming a lot around the city, the volcanoes around. So I have plenty of uh, good uh, footage to work with. And if you haven't subscribed, this might be a good timing to do so. Always some action in Iceland when it comes to geology. And uh, my next update will be very soon. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.